to be a truly good artist, you have to paint without wondering what everyone else would think about the painting. A good speaker speaks. Yes, he speaks to an audience, but at the end of the day, he has to speak from a feeling, a conviction within him without regarding what everyone else might be thinking about what he's saying. And the same is true for imagining. And when you go to imagine, you have to imagine without wondering about the worth that you think you have or don't have. About wondering what someone else might, how crazy of an idea to believe in. You have to eventually drop it. The same way when you would drop that while you paint, you to, to really be in tune with your painting. It has to just be you and the painting. And as the same idea applied here with imagining. And so it says to commune with oneself. You says to, to commune with yourself. That is what we're told in the Proverbs. And so I commune with my own heart. It's a, Again, it's self-accepting, self-convincing, self-persuading, whatever word you want to use, but it's self done to self. I'm not trying to convince you to believe. I'm trying to convince myself. And so, so when I go into meditation or I go into a, when I go to imagine, I let go of trying to change everything outside of me. For all outward change first happens from myself. And so I go to change myself. And you have to ask yourself, how often when you go to imagine, do you actually feel secure? That you leave the world alone, that you don't try to seek security in the world, but you seek it within yourself. And there you'll find it. You'll see that, uh, that security is a way of being. It's a way of feeling about oneself. And so regardless of what the world happens, uh, there's an apartment building that burned down close to me. And so could you imagine if you put your security in, in an apartment building? It could burn up tomorrow. And so I don't rely on the security of the appearances. I don't decide whether or not how secure I am with that. I have to let it go. I have to stop judging after the appearances for my own security. I have to feel after it. I feel after things and I find them within me. I don't seek them. I feel after them. Because if you always try to find it in things, everything here will get old. No matter how good you bind your books in leather, they, they, you can lose them. Things are not permanent here. We're not permanent here. Our stay isn't permanent here. So, but if I want, while I'm here, if I want to live differently, I can't change things. I leave this world exactly as it is. And so you might have people doubting everything or judging you. Just let them judge. You turn the other cheek to the world and you go within yourself and you change yourself from a version of you that wasn't secure to now a version of you that is secure. And you. You base your security on your own I amness. It's your own self, your own sense of self. So you change your sense of self to being secure. And that is what the Bible is describing. When we read the books and we, we see people being killed and you see wars happening, you think this is a this is insane. This is insanity. But when you see it as a common theme, it has to do with worship, with man with God, with sin and death. It's always the same themes. And when you see the idolaters will be put to death or, or you, your idols will be smashed or all your, your superstitions will be gone, your sins will be made as, though they are scarlet, they'll be made as white as snow. And you'll know that I'm the Lord. But that really just says you'll know that I am the I am, that the Lord is the I am. And so you give up all outward worship. You stop worshiping anything on the outside to decide that is the cause of your life. When you give it causation, when you give it that power, you give your, you have convinced yourself you're powerless. And so it is my belief that everybody gets pushed to a certain position in life where they have to decide who their Lord is. They have to decide who they're going to worship. And they'll find that these gods that they're praying to don't do anything. And until this day, people are, we're idolaters. We... We worship statues all the time. We clasp our hands and pray to them. And yet it tells us the Lord doesn't hear us. I will shut my ears off to them. They will pray loudly, but I won't hear them, as it says. And we think that's a cruel God. But if we see that the Lord is my own I amness, 
that's what listens, that's what creates, then I change my orientation or my idea of God. And I see that God is within me, and he's the fabric of my own being. And that's what I change. And so that the I amness becomes the cause of my life. I don't give it to something, to some billionaire. I don't say some billionaire is causing my life. I don't say it's, well, it's her or it's him or it's them. I don't do that anymore. I let go of the outside and decide that my own I amness is the cause of my life. And that is what I change. And so the things that you notice within your life right now, the things that seem to catch your attention, the interpretations you give it is all based on your state. It's all based on your, your conception, your current conception of yourself. And so when you change the conception of yourself, you will notice different things in reality. You will notice that self. And so you see reality is you. And so if you need a change in reality, you don't need to look any further than your own I amness. That is the Lord of Scripture. That is who is telling you that they, de- they absolutely detest outside worship because those gods don't listen. They don't have ears. They're just made of wood. Everything on the outside, people will believe in superstitions and think certain crystals and rocks will do things for them. They think that that is the cause and tells us that, it, that the that Lord will destroy that superstition. They think that if they that a certain thing can destroy their life, a certain card, if it's flipped, can can give them a certain fate. Or if they cast a certain amount of lots or a certain way of lots, then that's going to decide their fate. All of that superstitious thinking that led you there will be destroyed. And you'll see that there is only one Lord. It's your own I amness. And so Christ is the one that cleans up your temple. And your temple is your mind. And it cleans it from superstitious thinking, from devils and demons. And it gets rid of all these false gods. And then it says that you will no longer say, because this is in Ezekiel, that there's a proverb that says many days go by, but the visions don't come true. And he says, no longer will you say that. You will say that my words will be fulfilled without delay. And so you see that the idea that things are not happening in your world, that idea will be gone. All these things will be changed. And so if you, to the one who worships or the true God, which is your own I amness, to that one, your temple will be cleaned and your imagination becomes a place where words are now fulfilled, where scenes are implied and superstitions are gone and idols are destroyed and all that's left is your own I amness, the Lord. And that's who you will follow and you'll no longer have to clasp your hands to pray. You'll pray in spirit. It's not said God is spirit those, and we must worship him in spirit. And so that's where I go. I go within myself. To worship God. I no longer have to grab a mic and raise my voice hoping that God hears me as a prayer. I pray within myself. I commune with myself. I commune with the Lord, but the Lord is my I am. It's my my the very core of my being. Can't be anything without first being. And so to test that, start to feel secure regardless of circumstances. Regardless of whatever anything tells you, change your own I amness. Let that be the cause of your life. No longer giving causation to idols and people. And again, if they judge you, let them judge you. You keep turning to their cheek. You simply go towards your own I amness that you want to be. You don't have to be in a special space. You don't have to know anybody. You don't have to know the right people. You don't have to know anything. All you have to know is the Lord. You just have to know your own I amness. That's the Lord. You have to know that's your cause. Anything else is a false God. Anything outside of you is a false God to worship. I used to hear it all the time. People would say, oh, the devil's in my marriage. The devil's this or this crystal does that. I used to hear this all the time. And I I questioned that. Every time I heard I questioned, there was some type of scapegoating going on there I didn't like. So your I amness is reality. And that is what you change. You go within yourself and you don't change anything on the outside. You just change yourself. You focus on the change in self for all outward manifestations come from a change in self. And so you learn to be truly blind to the world and you become a prophet that sees within himself. You see with your inner eyes. 
You see fulfillments. You see things that are implied. You, you hear things that are implied. That is what you keep imagining. You imagine the implication that it already is so. That's what you imagine. You don't go before that. Again, imagine what you want and then go a little bit beyond that. And that is what you imagine. That is what you persist in. That is what you accept. However you want to say it, that is what it is. It's the part that goes right beyond it. The implication. That is what you imagine. And the scene that is clean, or the, 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 the mind that is cleaned or cleansed no longer says it's four months until harvest. It no longer thinks in those terms. You'll see that I amness is a present thing. It's a present being. And it's the cause of my life. So if I need to change something, if I'm in desperate need of a change, I have to see that I can't change the gods outside of me. I don't go to a new god. I don't go to a new religion. I don't put my I don't bow before something else. I don't pray to I don't think that my savior is going to be the president or another form of Caesar. I don't pray to Caesar. I go within myself to my own I amness. My own sense of self. That is what I change. That is what's most important to me. That is what I take everywhere. That is what I notice in my life. And so your self, your mind, is analogous with clay. It's not concrete. So you can always change it. Never feel you're in a permanent state. If you feel like you need freedom from a state, imagine that you have the freedom. You always go to things being fulfilled. That is a cleansed mind. That is freed from superstitions, freed from second causes, freed from devils, freed from ideas that, and reason that simply tell you and doubts that tell you that you can't simply be in the I am of that. That is your mark that you, you keep missing. It's your own I am. So you start thinking I was. You keep going to I was. Or you keep going to I will be. In the not too distant future. Four months from now. You start thinking in those terms the moment you don't, when you, when you start believing in second causes. And so when you read the Bible, and I encourage you that you do, you will see that the Lord is your I amness. That it will destroy everything. It will build you from the ground up. We might have believed in a million devils and gods and created a mess inside of ourselves. You ever believed in a superstition? People will believe that if they knock on wood, they'll get lucky. Instead of feeling after luck, or sorry, they'll get unlucky. Instead of feeling after luck, they knock on wood so they don't get unlucky. I mean, you have to see the insanity in that. Because when you see superstitions, how insane they are, you'll see that, that the Lord really is the only thing you need to believe in, yourself. It doesn't matter where you're at. That's the beautiful thing about it. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you're at. You could be drinking a beer. You could be at a bar. You could be alone and you could be in a, a country that you don't want to be in. You could be anywhere. It doesn't matter. As Neville said, you could be locked in a dungeon. You imagine the implication of being freed. And so you leave the prison alone, change your conception of no longer being a prisoner. That's what you do. And, the, and then the next thing you know, you'll cleanse yourself. You'll, you'll bump into a new superstition within you, a new fear, a new idea that you've been believing in. And that will be destroyed. A new prejudice that keeps you from fulfilling something within you. You destroy that. And then all that will be left is the Lord. 